it doesn't matter how big of a pageant you make, how much, you know, you invest into it, how much luxury and spectacle and, you know, extravaganza you bring to the table, if you are not going to respect and treat everyone equally within the pageant, then there is really no purpose. You might attract a lot of viewers, you might attract a lot of attention, but that does not translate into credibility. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. It's your boy Luis Portales and for today's video we have a very special video because we're gonna be having kind of a reaction mixed with a review of the Miss Grand International finale which just happened hours ago. And believe me you, I do have a lot of things to say about the pageant. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are just like personal opinions as well, but the purpose of this video is just to kind of like open my bag, let it all out and just, you know, share my thoughts with you guys. For those of you who follow me on my Twitter account and my Instagram that you probably know what I'm talking about, but obviously for those of you who don't, I will be explaining during this video. I do want to put a little disclaimer here uh, before we actually get into the content for today's video and is that the purpose of this is pretty much just to give you my overall perception of the entire pageant, my review of it pretty much. By no means I'm trying to send any hate to any candidates or trying to ignite the fire for the fans to start like a fandom war or anything like that. This is barely my opinion and just myself expressing how I feel about everything that went down during the pageant. And of course, as I always do, I wanna say a big congratulations to the winner and also to the top five, to the top 10, the top 20, and ultimately every single candidate who participated on this year's edition of Miss Grand International, because I truly feel like they gave the fandom a lot of things that we should be grateful for. Now, having that said, we're gonna start the video by talking about some of the good things about the competition. You know, I like to keep it positive at first, then I'll give you some of my thoughts about the things that didn't work for me, so the bad. And I will close this video by giving you some of my personal perception of what the future of Miss Grand International is and how the fans should handle it. So if you're interested in hearing those things, please keep watching. Uh, while you're at it, please don't forget to leave a like on the videos so that it gets recommended to more people. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And last but not least, let me know in the comment section if you agree with my point of view, or even if you don't, you can express yourself respectfully always and just have an adult conversation. All right, my friends, so without further ado, let's get into today's video. I really hope that you enjoy it, or at least you try to. You're strong. <laughs> Alright everyone, so let's get right into it. Let's start by talking about some of the positive things that happened during Miss Grand International 2021. The good points that I actually did like. And the first thing that I would like to highlight is the overall production of the show. In my opinion, Miss Grand International has really stepped it up when it comes to the production value. And what I mean by that is the visual aspect of the show, the stage, the lighting, the entire, you know, like technical team camera angles, I really feel like they really went above and beyond to give us something that not only will feel very premium, very, you know, well put together, but also a very smooth experience for the fans to witness the show. When it comes to the production, I feel like one of the main moments during the entire finale was the swimsuit competition. I really, really loved um, how much time the girls have to present themselves, you know, starting from the point where they were just like at the back with the other girls and then they would walk the entire stage with the beautiful backdrops, everything pink, their names coming up on stage. I felt like it was really well put together. So honestly, props to them on that level. I also feel like the host did a very good job when it comes to, you know, guiding the entire ceremony and making sure that there were no dull moments or that everything was well together, you know, like sometimes uh, based on previous experiences that we have had um, when it comes to the host, we know that although the organization might give us an amazing show, if the hosts are not just right, it might really take away from the experience. And in my opinion, this guy that they had was, you know, very good with the communication skills, but he was also very good to give us, you know, the right dynamic, the right energy levels, and help us move on to the next stage of the competition step by step. I also really, really enjoyed the farewell of Abina. I felt like he felt, well, no pun intended, very grand. Uh, she seemed to be, you know, very emotional, and she seemed to really mean the speech that she was delivering, you know? Something that you have to give props to Abina about is that um, you know, she's a good communicator. She knows how to connect with people on a personal level and make you feel empathy, make you feel like a lot of 
emotions that not everyone is able to do and although based on my last year's videos you guys know that I have not always been the biggest fan of Abina I do feel like she did a good job during her reign I do feel like I mean with all of the restrictions that come with the pandemic I do believe that she was able to fit the part and deliver something that kind of elevated the crown and the organization the overall rhythm of the show felt just right and when you think about it it was a three plus hour show but it seemed to go by pretty fast of course, there were certain moments where I felt like it could have been shortened a little bit, such as the introductions, you know, I felt like it was just never ending. And also the statement section of the show, I felt like you know, they could have trimmed it a little bit. Now, for those of you out there who really enjoy my Q&A reviews and my statement reviews, I will actually have a separate video for that because I really want to sit down and react to everything that was said and asked during the competition to the candidates who made it into the top five and also want to review the statements of those who made it into the top 10. But now let's get into a discussion that I know that most of you are here for, which is you know, the things that didn't work in the competition. And believe me, I am going to try as much as possible to be neutral, to be careful with my choice of words because although I have a platform, you know, I make videos about pageants and all of that I am one of you guys, I am a fan, I am very passionate my emotions are very intense when it comes to these pageants and these girls so I do feel attacked sometimes something that I truly felt like it wasn't working properly was the illogical placement of certain candidates at times and I do specify at times because I don't feel like everyone's placement was unfair. It's, I'm not saying that I don't agree with the top 20 or the top 10 or the top 5. What I'm saying here is that there were certain candidates such as Philippines, such as Thailand, such as Cuba that honestly in my opinion deserved more. I was actually very vocal about this on my Twitter account. I reshared that information on my Instagram and automatically it also goes to my Facebook page. So for those of you who follow me on those platforms, you have been knowing about my feelings for quite some time. I was just kind of like trying to find a reason why I was like questioning myself, what went wrong, you know, which competition, was there a moment where these candidates didn't deliver for them to not make it into the top 20. I mean, we're not talking about top 10, we're not talking about top five, yes. We're talking about top 20 in the competition. And there were certain choices that were made when it comes to certain candidates that did get into the top 20 that I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Of course, I'm not gonna get into names because my purpose honestly is not to point my finger at anyone and be like, you are the servant or you are not the servant because ultimately I was not there, you know, behind the scenes. I had access to the same information as all of you did. So perhaps the organization and the people behind the scenes saw something that we didn't see. But based 100% on performance, Samantha Panlilio deserved to make it into the top 20. I know that Hazel Bayante, Miss Cuba, deserved to make it into top 20. I know that Miss Thailand also deserved to make it into top 20. As I was trying to rationalize this entire thing and posting my thoughts and then getting the replies of everyone at the same time on Twitter or on Instagram and I'm just being bombarded with so much information, what I was thinking is that there is this history of a huge uh, grudge between Philippines and Thailand and then I'm questioning those thoughts. I'm like, but is it really possible? Like how come the national director will do something like this? And we're gonna talk about that later on during the video, but I was actually having the same questions with Miss Cuba. I was like, okay, but Cuba already won a Miss Grand International crown back in the day. So maybe they just don't want like another representative, but Hazel was one of the girls who did amazing when it comes to all of the presentations the preliminaries she killed it the evening gown presentation she killed it her passarella in my opinion is one of the strongest ones in the competition and you guys can tell me if i am lying because a lot of people are gonna tell me louis you are biased because you have a filipino audience or because you are cuban but look facts are facts as i always tell you there is really no purpose no point in me sitting in front of a camera to just lie to you and talk to a camera for 30 minutes without saying anything substantial. If I'm telling you this and I'm ranting, it's because I honestly believe that it wasn't rational. There was something that things were not adding up and I was just not dealing with it as I should. To the point where I almost felt like Miss Thailand was almost the sacrifice that had to be done in order to calm the fandom because a lot of fan favorites, and I'm not just talking about Philippines, Cuba, and Thailand, I am also talking about countries such as Dominican Republic who had a stellar presentation from beginning to end of this entire competition. I'm talking about Colombia who was like a front runner for so so many. I'm talking about India and the list goes on and on and on and I was just wondering did they just sacrifice Miss Thailand so that they cannot say that the pageant 
person is biased since they sacrifice their own country. Look, I don't know, but I guess that this is the segment of the video where I would really like to hear your opinions. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you guys to let me know in the comment section, how do you perceive this, right? I'm still having a lot of mixed emotions and even before I was gonna film this video, I was trying to calm down and just try to be rational because I don't wanna come off as aggressive or impulsive or that I'm assuming stuff, but there are just so many things you know, coming up and being presented to me that I'm just like, come on now, you guys can do better than this, so much better than this. And the saddest part about this entire thing is that if the decision making within the organization was truly, you know, biased, it's just a shame for the candidates because when you think of all of these girls, they have worked so much for so long. They have invested so much money, time, resource, you know, they have sacrificed time with the loved ones and away from work in order to give everything to this competition. And I feel like if that was not being honored by the organization, if that was not being appreciated, and if it's not a link of mutual respect between candidates and organization, this is a problem that is just going to get worse and worse over time. And this brings me to talk a little bit about the future of Miss Grand International and how I feel like this pageant is standing right now in the pageant community atmosphere. First of all, I know that this is a feeling that a lot of people share and is that the fans don't feel listened. The fans feel like they are being used for views, for votes, for revenues, and that they are not really being taken seriously. I know for a fact that this is a sentiment that the Philippines shares a lot. And you know, and if Cuba wasn't such a small country when it comes to pageantry, I would almost say the same thing about my country because I know that, I mean, I have personally been so, so invested in this pageant. When it comes to getting to know my Cuban representative, which I know by the way that she is heartbroken. She replied to my story with a sad face. Everyone within that small bubble, it's also affected by the decisions of the organization. It's not just the candidate, it's also the respective organizations, it's their entire teams, it's their designers, it's their makeup artists and their hairstylists. You know, and there's just like so many people behind it that I feel like, it doesn't matter how big of a passion you make, how much, you know, you invest into it, how much luxury and spectacle and, you know, extravaganza you bring to the table. If you are not going to respect and treat everyone equally within the pageant, then there is really no purpose. You might attract a lot of viewers, you might attract a lot of attention, but that does not translate into credibility. And I feel like that is the biggest problem with MGI as of right now, is the fact that people, yes, they acknowledge that they have an amazing production, they invest a lot of money, it's a fun pageant, but people don't take MGI seriously because of the poor decision making, the poor judging, and the poor placement of candidates who obviously are doing an amazing, incredible job. How do you expect us, the fans, to be excited about an upcoming edition, to be looking forward to this entire experience once again, when candidates who have been running the entire competition from beginning to end are being overshadowed by ones that you cannot even tell what the judges saw or what the judges were looking for? If anything, I feel like there is a huge disconnect between what the fans are seeing, what they're looking for, and between what the organization is looking for or appreciating in these girls. And truly, it is that very disconnect that brings me to the last point that I wanna make on this video, and it's the fact that MGI still feels like a very general, generic, synthetic pageant in the sense that there is no concrete purpose behind it. You know, this entire concept of peace and war, uh, it just feels too general and it can be banded in any way that, you know, anyone wants. I know for a fact that as I was watching the finals, particularly the statement piece, I felt like some of these girls were just coming with messages. They were just talking, but empty words. There was really no message behind what was being presented to the audience. And that's when I realized, you know, it's a cause and it's an advocacy that can be really thrown at anything, you know? Peace and war, but nothing specific. And I believe that this is problematic for the girls because even themselves going into the competition, they don't know what to expect. They don't know what is required of them or how the organization would like for them to use that, you know, concept of peace and war and then adapt it to whatever they represent in their countries. And you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I feel like most of the fandom also feels the same way. When you think of Miss Earth, you know that they have a clear purpose which is for the environment. When you uh, think of Miss Universe, you know that they're looking for an extraordinary woman and the list goes on and on and on. But when you think of MGI, what is the essence of an MGI reigning queen? There is this aspect of being very grand, but when it comes to the advocacy, peace and war, how do they advocate? How do they become spokesperson for this 
you know, very abstract concept. So just to kind of summarize everything, because I know that you guys don't want me necessarily to talk for 45 minutes, but just to give you my main points and how I feel about this entire situation, I truly believe that there is a lot of room for improvement when it comes to, to the pageant. And this is not because Samantha didn't make it into the top 20 or because Miss Cuba didn't make it into the top 20. I feel like fans deserve better. Uh, and fans deserve more transparency when it comes to the decisions that are made by this organization. There are far too many videos out there and proofs and stuff that the people have seen and heard and from members of the organization, from the president of the organization that just makes us feel unappreciated, that just makes us feel like we are not wanted or included or that they are just taking benefit from a certain group of people. It's important for the organization to be aware of the fact that visibility and numbers does not equal credibility and I actually just did a poll on my channel just a few days ago without even knowing that this was gonna happen and the results you know were pretty clear was pretty straight to the point. People still think that Miss Universe that you know other pageants in the world are much bigger much more influential than Miss Grand International although they claim to be one of the biggest pageants right now and and even during one of their activities now what had the nerve to say that it was the biggest pageant in the world so to make it the biggest pageant in the world you have to bring not only the biggest production but also the biggest level of equality and mutual respect between candidates fandom and organization on my channel i follow samantha's journey from beginning to end not only during mgi but from bini bini Pilipina. so you knew that i was rooting for her my girl i am so proud of you you did your best and i have no doubt in my mind that you were just as shocked as the entire community when it was announced that you didn't make it into the top 20 you should be proud of everything that you did same thing goes for hazel bayan miss cuba i am so extremely proud because for the very first time i have felt like represented and seen on such a big platform and i've been like so extremely proud of just the place that i come from overall i did get to know her a little bit better just prior to the competition and honestly it was, she was just the sweetest girl on every single chance that i got to talk to her i am so proud regardless of the outcome of the competition and once again same thing goes for every single candidate out there they all tried their best congratulations to the winners i am not discrediting anyone or taking away your moment to shine this is yours enjoy it miss vietnam congratulations so happy for the vietnamese community out there and for everyone who supports miss vietnam and for the fandom out there that i know they are looking for some consolation for some way to grieve i would say send some love to your candidates you know make a post put something on facebook on your stories make a video send it to them tag them send them love they also wanted this as bad as we did and they also are going through hard times and you know feeling sad but i'm sure that all of us as a community will get through it and we'll see what happens next year do you think that Bini Bini Pilipinas should send another candidate to Miss Gun International I don't know I honestly have mixed feelings about it and last year when the situation happened with Samantha Bernardo I was kind of in the middle I was like yeah but I mean like maybe stop sending a candidate that's too much of a drastic move but at this point I feel like there is a pattern it's a behavior that is happening here so I don't know Bini Bini Pilipina should continue sending a candidate but perhaps not give MGI so much importance you know as of right now MGI is the second biggest crown that Bini Bini Pilipina is given and I feel like that respect you know that mutual respect and appreciation between organizations is not there is missing so until that disconnect is fixed and that there is something that goes both ways i wouldn't send my stronger candidates my most prepared ones my most passionate ones knowing that they will be underappreciated internationally mm -mm 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 -mm. You let me know how you feel about all of this so i'll wrap it up here because i've been talking for a while that's a lot of information but let me know how do you feel about everything that i said once again you don't have to agree with everything this is my opinion and you are entitled to yours as well if you want to talk about it leave a comment respectfully we can have once again an adult conversation about these things what i'm gonna ask from you as a content creator is that if you like my video please leave a like so that it gets recommended to more people subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one almost every single day and last but not least, come here and give me a hug because although we are sad today, this is the tradition on the channel. You know that I love you, that I appreciate you. Thank you for coming and spending a few moments out of your day here with me. And until I see you next time, please stay safe, be kind to one another, sending you all my love, all my kisses, and I'll see you on the next one.